Hello, this is a Steinway Model M grand piano that's 5 foot 7 inches long, uh, made in 1931. The restoration's just been finished and it's now on the showroom floor. The piano has two pedals, like most Steinways of this era, and uh, the key tops have been replaced. So these were originally ivory, um, but we decided to replace them. The piano's been restored in a very similar way to many of our previous restorations that we have videos of but uh, one difference is we we have replaced the rest plank as we usually do and this time with a bulldog Canadian bulldog rest plank which um, dead ignit and bulldog rest planks are equally good I think there's a slight tendency to put bulldog in Steinways I think so we decided to do that on this one there's a model M as you can see there and uh, finished off as perfectly as we can really is faithful to the original. The casework's been refinished and is perfect uh, black polyester as you get on new pianos and really the piano is identical to a new piano though we feel that the tone of the 1920s 1930s Steinways um, is probably is certainly richer than the modern pianos I believe and I think most technicians would bear that out so obviously it's got to be restored as faithfully as possible. These are German bass strings and you can see by the string line uh, that they're um, made with high and great integrity. There's the um, front end of the bass strings and you can, as you can see they've been coned here which is, um, makes it look very neat and tidy. So now that the bulk of the restoration has been done, um, just to check to see if we can improve the touch and the tone at all. Uh, touch we need to have a down weight of just under 50 grams, that's a 50 gram weight so that's just under 50 grams. This is tested with the foot on the damper pedal and it's not completely even, this is an A here, but it's very nearly 50 grams there, but we'd like to get it as even as possible. Let's try some other keys, so that one is perhaps a bit less. So we'll just want to even it out a bit more. And that's done by a fine lubricant if, if that's what it needs, or otherwise just re-weighting the keys a bit, just um, putting, adding or taking away leads. Um, so we're, we're constantly having to do this both to our own pianos and clients restoration pianos uh, so you can see they're not completely consistent and the sharps too need to be the same so let's check that sharp that's pretty good and the next sharp here those are both in the trebles it should be if anything slightly lighter in the treble area now the other factor in touch is the regulation so first of all the key dip I want to check that that's even and it is just under 11 millimeters which is my preferred key dip on, on Steinway, so 10.5 to 11, just under 11. Um, that gives it enough en enough action movement, really, to get a good touch. So there's enough key dip to get what we, a good, what we call set off or let off, and uh, you can feel it. So there's an after touch, and it's letting off as close to the string as possible. I think we can probably get that a little bit closer. So again, f slight refinements, making sure all the same. Um, the spring is operating well when we release the back check by moving the key up a bit. The spring comes up not too hard so it's going to double hit but, but strongly. But over the years it'll get weaker so we like to leave it reasonably strong. And then the, the drop, well it drops pretty close as well so um, again we might be able to refine that slightly. But the sharp, by the way the, the key dip for the sharp, I do a lot by feel as well. and We've got as good aftertouch there so they both feel about right. Now the other factor is the tone of course. The tone is very nice, very pleasant tone on this Steinway. I'm very encouraged by, by the strings and hammers and soundboard. Give it uh, just the tone you'd expect, a wonderful. Now the tone though, we want to check that they're even. So when I play that, does one note sound louder than the other? That one slightly louder. That's a lot louder, that one. I should really say brighter. Now I've taken the, the fall off so you can see the key there. And we're going to mark the key. I hope you can hear the difference there. And then this round, this is the first area I start with normally, which is the main singing area where you wanted to sing. So let's mark this sharp here and you can mark it on top above it. It's just easier to get the mark off. And uh, let's have a listen to some of the others. They're pretty even. 
because this is the first refinement, we'll probably go over it again, maybe two or three times. That's a bit softer there, so I'm going to mark that one as a softer one. Let's do the line that way around. And that's brighter as well. So we'll just go up to there for the time being, and um, we'll look into voicing those. As we look inside, we can see that it's been fitted with new hammer shanks and rollers and felts generally. Um, we've talked about this many times before. The rollers should be lubricated, by the way. Um, we're talking about making the touch light. I don't think we're going to be able to do that by lubrication, so it's probably going to have to be key weighting because um, it's already lubricated well. Um, but a piano that we were restoring for somebody or reconditioning, we would do that. Now, it doesn't say Arbel on the side here. That's because they've chamfered the hammers. And if you can see that in order to reduce weight, the hammer is not, uh, has been chamfered down. Sorry, it's not very well in focus. That's better. You can see the shape of the hammer. Um, instead of being sort of e rectangular here, it's, it's been chamfered down to a point. Um, that's to reduce weight. So we Arbel's been missing on the side there, but it, it definitely Arbel hammers. You can tell by the style of them. And they're called Arbel Natural Felts, which is their highest quality hammer. Now this is the area that we will be voicing first, and that's a sort of play, playing area here. Now there are no marks on the hammers because they're brand new, and I like to mark hammers very gently with carbon paper just to so we can see where the string is, where where they're hitting the strings. So we're going to mark the hammers uh, lightly with carbon paper just to see what's happening. So now the hammers have been marked, we can get a, a clear idea of what's happening, and I'm pleased to say that these hammers are put on per perfectly, really. They're hitting all three strings equally. Sometimes, especially if you get refaced pianos, you get them hitting one's really strong line and then the other two are, uh, well, say that last one may not be there at all because if you don't play too loud when you use the carbon paper, you'll, you'll show up any deficiencies. And so you've got to straighten the hammer out because there's nothing worse than a hammer hitting one string less um, hard than the others, you get very strange sounds coming out of it with the harmonics sometimes. But these are very even, um, I'm pleased to say, which is encouraging. Now, it's voicing it, we, let's look at one of the ones that we need to voice. So this one here, this is um, the, uh, the sharp, uh, the C sharp, it needs to be voiced. Now I would first of all voice in between because that will vo voice for the unicorder. And also with these marks on, we can tell if the unicorder is shifting correctly or not. Whereas without marks, you can't. And then having voiced here, first of all, by the way, you voice around here on the shoulders, but that's all been done. So this is just very fine voicing indeed, and you don't want to go very deep. Uh, perhaps one millimetre uh, was with Ur, um, Ulrich Gerhardt recently, who's the Steinway chief technician in the UK. And he does 1.5 millimetres maximum on the point. Don't go very deep because you'll damage the hammer, um, but you can bring it back slightly if you've done too much, if you don't go too deep but hopefully get it right the first time. So very gentle voicing here. Um, first of all, in between for the unicorder and then voicing across the top very gently again. Um, don't overdo it. So do it, put it back in, check that it's correct. So we're going to voice that down and the other ones, which uh, one of them was this one here, this sharp, it's going to be voiced down. And the other one was too mellow, if anything. Or I could voice that up slightly by ironing the hammer With hammer's mark, we can also check the unicorder shift. So that's right on top, filming right on top of the hammer, shifting the unicorder, and that's exactly correct, where the left-hand string just catches the edge of the hammer, and uh, the, other, the hammer doesn't move f right to the next groove, because that'll make, you want a different part of the hammer to be hitting the string, so it's soft to sound. That's, I haven't voiced this one yet, so, but I'll voice this and I'll show you the difference. I hope you'll be able to pick this up. That's ordinary on a quarter, on a quarter. Play four of each. Probably not that audible. Sorry about that. So when they're when all the on a quarter's done, and you do notice the difference when they're all played at once. Uh, that's one of the ones I've voiced. You can see this slight change of colour at the top, and I just fluff it up slightly at the edge just to remind myself that I've voiced that one for the unicorder and uh, see if we can find another one. We can see the fluffy one there, which we've just done. So um, it's quite a lot of work just to get 
the voicing. Obviously, you, uh, you could voice all day long, but to get it certainly as even as possible. So that's a Steinway Model M, five foot seven inches long, and just come onto the showroom floor, having been fully restored. I'm just doing the full final refinements. I've tuned the piano and and uh, just doing checking on down weight and up weight and. Uh, also voicing the piano. It's a very full, beautiful sound as you'd expect from a Steinway. We have restored many of these and Model O's as well in the past, so there's plenty of videos that um, you could have a look to get other aspects of the piano. There's German Steinway, made in Hamburg. has a beautiful rich tone throughout, it's typical of a 20s Steinway really. They are, in my opinion, one of the very best periods for this for the Model M, which is the early period for Model M's, not been out too long before that. So beautiful piano all round. Thank you very much for listening.